kind of makes you wonder how in the world or why in the world something got parked out here <laughs> in the middle of nowhere like this. Yeah. I knew there were some trees around it, but man, those things are huge. The best plan of action that I have is that we're gonna clean all this out behind here so you have a, obviously a place to get the tree out, but we are gonna have to cut these down. Whoever thought you'd have to unbolt a tree from your car? <laughs> Now this car is pretty rough and mainly because of these trees. Uh, we'll just have to dig into it a little bit deeper, see what kind of bones we're working with, get up underneath this hood, and just see what kind of surprises await us then. On the latch here. I'm not sure, but I think this thing may open funky. I think it actually swings to the front, but I'm not sure. Looks like it just opens up here though, don't it? Yeah. Have to try to pry at it. It's got some kind of a latch right there in the center of it. Popped out, broke out, something. Something happened. Now, there it goes. Yeah, that's a weird design there. Oh yeah, of Ooh, course. Watch out, there's a big hole like something's been in there recently. It's just as bad as the Ford. Missing the radiator though, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty big hole. Yeah. That's a big old rat. <laughs> yeah. Let's try to get this hood off, I guess, where we can kind of get at all this junk a little better. Looks like there's a motor in here. <laughs> at least the top half of it. Yeah. Out. These wires might have been a little bit more tastier. There's four or five wires screwed completely into there missing. Oh, yeah. Come off easy. Curious why the radiator's missing. No, that's not no, a, it. That's never a good sign. No. It'd be one of the easiest hoods to take off. There's I a just said. Spacer it. thing there. You may want to grab right on the inside of this. Oh, you're just held in. Okay. That one. It's like that. That's what came off of mine when it came to the yeah, that hadn't seen a lot of day in a, probably about a week. <laughs> yeah, like I said, don't know why it's missing the radiator unless it's in the car here. I didn't see it. Whoops. Let's set it back behind here. <laughs> Keep that from happening again. I don't see it inside there anymore. Unless it could be in the trunk. I see the shroud in there, but not. Oh yeah? Yeah, laying in that box. I guess I'll go grab the wheelbarrow and some gloves and we'll start shoveling okay. this mess out. This is not a good starting point, huh? Just to... No, it doesn't look like it. I don't know if that's fur or whatever that is right there. <laughs> that's probably something from a seat inside the car or something. Could be. Guess you want something to yeah. protect yourself with. <laughs> I think I might need a gun if that's the case. <laughs> oh, here's a battery. Oh yeah. I'd have never thought it had a battery that big. Figured it would probably actually be somewhere else on the car too. Right. I hope that maybe there's not a lot of other stuff. Look at that. It is a little, that's crazy. Yeah. It's a little V4. That's the smallest little valve cover I've ever Small. seen. <laughs> Smaller than a lawnmower. It looks kind of like a Volkswagen yeah. valve cover. Man, this has all kinds of little nooks and crannies. 
it's all packed in there tight. Yeah. There's the old dipstick. Now I know you find it. You always, <laughs> always get lucky. That seemed to be the lucky one. Hose oh, going up or something. Do we want to see what the what the oil looks like or what it? Yeah, if you got a clean enough spot. Now I'll try to make sure it's clean around it. And hopefully, it's got some in it. Dark and thick, huh? Dark and thick, and I don't know if that's rust. That would not surprise me. Try it again here. It's dark and it's definitely thick. About like that Ford was. Yep. It's not a good sign. That don't sound good. What in the world is that? That's the direction mine was headed. Is so. that a loofah? No. <laughs> I don't know what that Curtains. is. <laughs> I just feel like we're just kind of packing it back in. Yeah, it's just. Let me just try to blow some of this around just to see okay. if that helps us any at all. Look at that little bitty intake. Yeah. <laughs> that thing ain't but four inches wide. Yeah. Well, every time I say this is the worst one, but yeah. <laughs> if there's anything that ever tops this, I think we should just walk away before we start. Yeah. So we've kind of got this engine compartment cleaned up about the best as we can right now. Uh, we're just kind of blowing the debris that's left in there back and forth. So we can at least get down here on the crank pulley to try to see if this motor will turn over or not. I'm willing to bet this thing is locked up solid just like that other Ford we got from the same property. But uh, we'll try to get down on there, see if it tries to turn over, and then just make a decision of what we want to do from there. It's just tightening in. I know it's going to do that. Just, yeah, it's going to strip it off or whatever. Let's pull these plugs out. Get something down in it. You want to go ahead and pull the valve covers off too? Since how we know how that last one was. It won't hurt anything. Uh, I know we're not going to be lucky enough that it's just piston stuck. I mean, that it's right. going to be everything once again. Plugs don't look <laughs> terrible. I don't know how. This may be fun too. Ah, oh, that one's rusted up pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, mine was dry, but I mean it wasn't. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. Pretty rusty too. Yeah. Put them in your mouth. Yeah. yeah a moment of truth, huh? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Look a lot better. Yeah, that ain't too bad. That looks pretty good. Well, 
Maybe we'll just will be stuck down in the pistons there, hopefully. Did you get both ears out? Yeah, I'll trade you. Watch that. looks pretty good too. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Very good compared to what we've been working with. Well, I guess we want to get some stuff down in there and let it sit. I think so. For a few days or so. Uh -huh. Keep trying it out. Works for me. Yeah, that one didn't look too too rusty. Yeah, let's decide what what solution we want to try this time. Fill them cylinders completely up. Try it back in a couple days and see if it tries to move any at all. It may just break right over. It may do it, yeah. So now that we've got the spark plugs pulled out of this engine and the valve covers removed from the top end, I have to say the valve train is a whole lot better looking than what I expected when we started digging this thing out. So I don't know that we're gonna be fighting a lot of problems up here on the top end, more so just the pistons being stuck and maybe the crank being stuck down there in the oil pan. So we're just gonna go ahead and put some kind of a fluid down in these cylinders, fill it completely up, come back in a couple days, see if it'll turn over. Hopefully this thing will start turning over a lot quicker than some of the other ones we've messed with. I'd love to see this little V4 crank up and run. I mean, this is the first time I've ever seen one in person and definitely the first time I've ever tried to revive one. It's still just tightening in. I don't think it's even trying. Which don't really surprise me. I'm afraid we're gonna break it off. You definitely don't need to do that. It's kind of weird because that crank pulley is off-centered from the block anyways. Yeah. So I don't know how that really works like that. But... I mean, we could start pulling, pulling it apart, I guess, if we wanted to, but I wish we could get down down here on the flywheel and yeah. turn it over, but it's got that pan That's up right underneath the car. Pan completely, I mean, enclosed. There's no way. I'd rather, I'd rather not start tearing it down, but. Right. How about uh, trying a wheel or something? See if we can put it in gear and. Well, if we can get it in gear is the problem though. Get it in gear and just try to work try, it with yeah, a ratchet yeah, or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. I have no clue really how this thing even works. It doesn't want to move nothing. And the clutch is just <laughs> hard as a rock. Nope. Right. Oh, something moved there. Ah, I pulled out, it went into some gear right there. I'm assuming that would be reverse though. That might be first. If you, you gotta pull out on the little shifter thing and it like extends a little further and oh. it went into some gear. Well, I think it it's first. Moved, it's moving out. Huh? I just seen it moving out. Did it pop back out? It, well, it moved. It didn't move much, but it did kind of come back out. We'll jack it up yeah. and just see. to put that. Go up a little bit more. A little more in there. Yep. Keep going just a hair more if we get off that slope. Okay. 
I'm good. That should work. Just to see. Let me try to see if I can put it back in neutral, see if it even, I don't think it, it's moving a little bit. I think that's neutral, will it spin? Yeah, I can get spinach there. Turn it. Try to see if this other wheel turns when you do that. Do it again? No, okay. Yeah, I think we can probably put it in gear here and just see if it tries. I think that's first. Still spinning now? Yeah, but it, it's got a different feel to it, but this is spinning. Uh, what about? Forward it will, it won't go backwards. Now let's try to go. Well, let me try to put it in what I think is reverse. Try that. No, that's like neutral. Now? go forward but it won't go backwards huh well whichever one you want to try yeah. we'll go backwards and, and other than the motor flex and some and try to go the other way okay. yeah. Yeah. Too easy that way. Will it not go back the other way though? I'll go the other way, yeah, okay. I'm turning over Some, here. I'll start to say something's turning. Slipping, I guess. Yeah, I guess transmission's turning, but it ain't. I mean, the axles and stuff are turning, but the engine's not. Try that one more time. If not, the only thing I know, I mean, more than likely, it's not even going to try. But we can at least say we did it. Hook the hook the battery on, see if the starter just kind of gives it a good jerk. Or don't want to break any teeth off the flywheel, though. You're moving every. This whole front end's moving on the grill and everything. I'm gonna try to get a battery and see if that starter. I mean, the starter. It's worth a try. Starter may not even work. We may have to pull the starter off to get it to work again. But yeah. But I mean, maybe something sudden and right at that flywheel, that starter hitting it, it might help. It's worth a shot. Right. Before we have to make other decisions. This is at least kind of trying, huh? Looking. I don't know if you can give it a little smack on there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Nothing, huh? Mm -mm. Get it some metal on metal action just to see. Crazy. Been setting that long, but no. Sometimes that setting will help them a lot, and then sometimes it just does no good. Right. So we've had this thing sitting almost two weeks now with, we put the vinegar in there first, let it set a few days, uh, wasn't doing any good. So we pulled all that out. We filled it up with diesel and some transmission fluid. Uh, and obviously that doesn't seem like it's done any good either. So uh, we were able to go ahead and get the car in gear, try to work it back and forth on the wheels here, but it's not wanting to do anything but just slip on the transmission there. So we did hook up the starter here. We're only getting a little click down there, which is good. It does mean that we are getting some power down there to the starter it's just this engine's locked up and not allowing it to turn over so now we've just got to make the decision if we, if we want to set it out wait a little longer or dig into this thing and see exactly why it's locked up to where it's not wanting to turn over for us
I mean, it's going, it, could be, it could be where we do the same thing over and over. Anyhow. If we pull the motor out, we're probably still going to have to tear it apart right, top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's a matter of whether we do it outside here or do it inside. Yeah, I yeah. say just go ahead and start tearing it down. And I think if we get the, you know, get the intake pulled off, get the heads off, I think if we just are able to hit on those pistons with the oak board, yep. kind of move it a little bit. I think so. I'm like you. I mean, if we take it out, we're still going to probably have to tear the top end out. Right. And maybe this will save us the step of having to yeah. pull it Let's out. Let's do that then. Let's get the distributor out and try to pull that baby intake off there, I guess. But we probably want to be really careful with all these gaskets because finding parts for this thing, I don't think is going to be very fun. Yeah. So any of that stuff we can save, we need to. Well, nothing, nothing broke. Everything still looks to be in pretty good shape on that. Gear looks pretty good on it too, so. I'm gonna take this and yeah. stick it in there. I don't think we got an issue with the carburetor. Get stuff in it right So, there. six little 13 millimeters on the intake maybe. I need to get them hoses off there. Yeah, that is the littlest looking little intake. Has that got all of them? No, I've still got mine are stuck in there. I just, I got them loose, but I don't have them out. See that? Ford Motor Company, aren't they? So I guess oh, yeah. Ford has something to do with this little V4. <laughs> Probably so. As much trouble as we had with the last Ford. It's got it there, don't it? You need help? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind helping me set this over on the <laughs> table. <laughs> It's bad. We've we've messed with carburetors bigger than that yeah. whole intake. Well, we did manage to salvage the intake gasket. Well, at least yeah. <laughs> still got to get it off the heads now, though, don't we? Yeah. Lifters look good. Man, this thing doesn't look like it should be stuck like uh -uh. it is. It's got to be pretty rusty or down in those cylinders, or just the way they've kind of landed. Because yeah. I know one of them is like all the way down, and one of them's yeah. all the way up. I think we're just the opposite on each side here. Is Let's uh let's pull these rocker arms off here, I guess. Okay. Golly, look at that. It looks like a golf tee. <laughs> Thing's little, shorter than what I expected. Well, you know what we can use if we... <laughs> it bend to. a push rod. I'm gonna try to lay them down here in order. Guess I'm gonna have to try to get that, those exhaust bolts off there. Maybe fine. I think those are gonna wanna come out without breaking. Huh. 
could I could cut them. I was noticing most of that exhaust is rusted away out up underneath the car anyway. Uh, yeah. So I think that's what might be our best bet just to cut it rather than breaking off the cast on that head accidentally yeah. or something. Just cut it and we can fix that, you know, have new exhaust put on it if we got to. You think? Yeah. I'll go grab the saws all and cut it. I'm gonna start pulling loose my head bolts, I think. Okay. I thought I was going to have to go get my Sawzall license. Let me see that battery. heat from that exhaust it's probably got her locked in there well we got a mess up here don't we yeah it's not a big enough table for us <laughs> Before I get too far, I need to cut my hose. Did you get yours cut? No, I got my back clamp off. I'm hoping it'll just tear apart once I start taking it off, maybe. Whew. Two of mine are not wanting to come. Did you get all yours? No, I didn't. Uh, this yeah. side over here, I hadn't tried yet because I was trying to get that. I guess I'll try a little bit with the ratchet, but we may have to give a little heat to them. Yeah, at least it is coming. Ooh, we, I don't know about that one there. it off. May see what yours does first. <laughs> Let me break mine off first. Then that way it's, well, we got to do it anyways. Okay, let me. Oh, you already got those? Yeah. Lift up off of there? Uh, other than that hose right there, let me see. I figure once it lifts, I will. You can pull it. Let me go ahead and just get these bolts out of there so I'm not struggling with that. Those I've brackets one right here. there, too. Which oh, wait, no, I guess yeah. the head just goes right there. But I do have one right there. Yeah. 
I guess we'll keep going with it. Or... Uh, I don't know the heat's going to do. I don't it's, think so. We can try it, but I mean, it's it's going to be down there in the threads, not on the head. That's going to. Right. You want me to keep trying or just. I mean, it's got to come heat. out. I mean, I, we can put heat on it. I just think all we're going to do. Well, yeah, let's put some heat on it. breaks off now at least we gave it a fair try come on hang in there come with about is I don't think it'll be a hard one to get out if it breaks off it's just getting a new one to... right I think I'm just gonna go with it if it breaks we'll figure it out <laughs> I think there'll still be enough yeah. sticking up that we can, you know, get down on the thread part of it. Hate that, but. I think I about got mine. I'm gonna try to not mess that head gasket up. Hopefully. Yeah. Kind of, kind of rough, huh? Yeah. Man, them pistons are pretty big. Yeah, that's that's super rusty right there. Yeah, the bottom side of that's pretty rusty there. Well, I don't know where this come off of. A little wire plug-in thing off something. Mm -hmm. Well, probably a good thing we went ahead and pulled. A, pull it down we didn't even have to cut those stupid things there okay. now, <laughs> now they oh. look like they're going to be hard to replace oh well figure that out man that is bad rusty ain't it mm -hmm. golly mm -hmm. i don't know that just the, the bore on it is really the cylinder wall yeah, very yeah. pitted man i took a screwdriver and kind of got up underneath like that okay. thing and kind of Give it a little yeah. persuasion. I'd like to go ahead and get this intake gasket off here. If I lift up on mine, this little gasket thing there, unless there's one here too, but that one's held on. But it's the ends right there. Okay. There we go. What has got me held on over here? Don't come off. Did you get it? Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> yeah, that one's even worse, ain't it? Yeah. What does the bottom side of this look like? Pretty bad. You yeah. know, those valves are probably stuck. If you was to hit them, they would just stick hard. Man, I don't know. <laughs> How's that one look? It's it's heated up one. really bad. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think if you ever got this thing to turn over, it'd smoke like a freight train. Yep. Unless we can clean them, them cylinder walls mm -hmm. up some. Depending on what it looks like on the bottom side of the, the up ones. I bet it's not bad. I'm gonna grab the vacuum where we can kind of clean that out and examine them a little okay. better.
look as bad vacuumed out, do they? No, but... That one does. That one looks pretty rough. But down lower, it's not as right, bad, yeah, it's, is it? I think bad. it might actually clean off there. It's kind of soft, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got it. It's coming off. That is the weirdest design, though, the way that is. That I guarantee you, you're right. That yeah, water I mean, goes down in there. That's where them hoses hook up yeah. right in that area. So It just holds water in there and keeps the, the whole thing cool like that. That's pretty neat. Well... I guess we'll try to just keep cleaning them, spray them down with some more stuff and let them set a little longer and see if we can't persuade it with an oak board, I guess. Yeah. I'm glad we went ahead and tore it down some though. Yeah. So I'm glad we went ahead and pulled the heads off this engine. On the top part of the motor, everything looked nice and clean, but down here in the cylinders, it's a completely different story. So somehow it's got some moisture down in there that it's held over time, and they've just rusted up pretty bad. It looked like on the inside of the cylinder wall, it was really pitted up, but after we've kind of vacuumed it out, cleaned it up, it's, it's rubbing off. So we're just gonna keep cleaning it up some more and more, and then we'll try to take like a oak piece of wood, hit it with the hammer as we're trying to turn it over, and hopefully we can get this engine to start turning over, put it all back together, and start back over from there to see what problems arise next. I don't know which ones are actually, I would think these ones here would be going down. I would think so too. Nothing? Nothing. Huh. Let's switch. Oh. I know this one right here is free because all the fluid done went right. past it. Huh. Just not much to, to get uh, a lot of no. torque on there. You know, I wonder the way, since that thing's off-centered there, there's got to be a gear or a chain or something inside there that yeah. runs to the crank. Yeah, you'd think so. I'll come back this other way, maybe. Come on. Is it moving some? I thought it did. It looked like that one come up. Oh. Well, thanks. Loosen yeah. up. Yep. Let's try to go, if that one come up when I'm doing that. So maybe I'll go down with it going the other way. Cause I thought I seen it move and I thought, well, maybe I'm just seeing things. back this other direction let you knock that one again I got it tightened again so Sleep. my fingers about to break off <laughs> okay I don't know I think it was uh, wishful thinking yeah. yep do we want to try to get on this axle again? I think it's worth a try. I mean, we're here like at said, it. Like I said, I think we could pull that timing cover off because I guarantee you that has to have be a gear or something that runs over to the crank or a chain yeah. or something. And we're just not able to get enough torque on it anyways. Yeah, and everything like, should be here in the center of the engine. So. There's nowhere on this transmission you can get at the flywheel because the, the bottom of the car is just complete sheet metal there. Yeah. Might be able to kind of smack around on it while I try this. The smack on it or try this? Probably um, smack on it probably be better. I don't know, whatever you think. That's the, uh, 
I like that one fine. Yeah, you can hear a little bit of a difference on yeah. that one. Uh, see the whole motor moving. The whole motor moving, moving huh? yep. Huh. That way. Don't do nothing. Um, man. Unfortunately, I feel like we're gonna have to pull that motor out of I there. I think so. To get on the flywheel. Get on the flywheel or get on could, something. We could pull the starter off, but there's no way you're gonna be able to get in there to pry at it. Uh-uh. If we pull it out, then we can probably just get on the flywheel with something or then maybe take the cover off. Yeah. Could be the cam stuck in it or I don't know. I feel like if we can get on that flywheel though, we can, oh, we can yeah. get some off on it and where we can't get it on this front part. It looks like it's probably only about six, six or eight bolts across there, a couple motor mount bolts up here, and then we'll just Yank pick it. it out of there. Yep. I think that's what we're gonna have to do. So as you guys can tell, we're trying to do everything we can to get this car up and running again. And in typical Texas fashion, we were out here in short sleeve shirts yesterday and now working in snow flurries today. Uh, we got these cylinders cleaned up pretty good. A lot of that that looked like it was so pitted up and just on the cylinder bore, we actually cleaned out with just a little bit of sandpaper and some steel wool. So we've got those cleaned, they've been soaking. We've tried hitting it with a, an oak board. Dad was able to get on this pulley up front here. That didn't seem to want to move it any. We put it in gear, got on this axle here to try to turn it over to as well, and that ain't seeming to work either. So unfortunately, I think at this point, we're just gonna have to pull the engine out where we can get on something a little bit more solid like the flywheel, or possibly pull this timing cover off where we can get on the actual crank there. So at this point, I think we're gonna call it quits for today and make a whole lot more sense to do this on a warmer day. We were just hoping we can make a little headway with it and move on to the next step. Kind of embarrassing to know we've even got this big old forklift to pull, I know <laughs> pull something like that out. But it was just it was hung so. Oh flywheel's pretty rusty down here from sitting in all that stuff so is the oil pan. Surprise it, it's that oil pan's about rusted plumb through. Wow even the oil filter is here. The top of the oil filter's plumb rusted. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> clutch springs inside there. Looks like maybe they put a new clutch in it sometime before they parked it. Got paint on the springs. Guess we'll try to get it on an engine stand then and see if we can figure out a way of getting on that flywheel better. And okay. Hopefully that'll allow us to get it to finally turn over. May have to pull the pan off though and try to get, you know, on that crank right. or some of them piston rods or something and hammer on them a little bit. So we were gonna try to get this massive engine onto our engine stand, but once we removed the clutch off the flywheel here, uh, we were having trouble finding the right length of a metric bolt to allow the stand to bolt on there. So we've moved on to plan B here, in which we've put a couple bolts into the back of the block here. We're hoping dad can get some kind of a pry bar, use these bolts as leverage to just try to turn this flywheel over. Now I'm probably gonna be smacking some of these pistons with this oak board as he does it. Hopefully we can just get it to move one way or the other and and then just start working it back and forth. Now, if we're able to get it to turn over like this, we won't have to remove the oil pan and try to mess with it from down low there. So hopefully if we can get this thing to start turning over, uh, that'll just get us one step closer to seeing if this thing's ever gonna run again. Well, let's see what we can get here maybe. Ready? Yep. Nope, I seen some kind of movement. It move? Yep, I seen it. It just kind of like a little pop, but it did move. Can't tell which way it's going though. All right. Yep. Still moving? Yep. 
I sure can't see it. This one's come up, it looks like. Yeah, it looks higher, don't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll keep. So, so these two would be coming up and these two going down, right? Right. Yeah. Let me come back this other direction, maybe. You okay. think? Uh, whatever you think. Well, or keep going now that we still got it going. Let's keep going. Okay. Is it turning? Yeah. We ain't up here. Huh. Yeah, these have come all the way up to the top, but these are not moving at all. That's not good. Or wait, maybe they're about to. Maybe they were at the bottom and... Yeah, I see that one moving just a little. I'm not able to get it. Huh. Oh. So these ones definitely have moved quite a bit, but... Well, we can go back the other direction if you feel like that might. Um, no, I think, I mean, these are, these apparently were at the bottom. Unless something's broke inside there. They've yeah. got to start coming back right. up. Is it still turning? Yeah, but it's, it's tough. Hard. Yeah. see those moving. Maybe that one, but this one right here don't seem like it is. I know we're going in this direction, but I'm just going to kind of lightly go ahead. As much as these are moving, those got to be, there's got to be, it's got to be broken there. Something that either broke on the, or broke rod, or broke something down in there. I don't know, I think it's still coming. I think, because somewhere down through here, they're gonna have to line up even with each other as they bypass each other. Just doesn't look like those have moved up much. Yeah, I think so, I mean, to me it does, because I it? guess because I'm looking at a different angle, but yeah. I mean, they were deeper down in there, I believe. Looking at it more in that optimistic angle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep trying, then. Yeah, they are. You're right. It's just very, very little. Very, yeah, I'm, very just, little. I'm not getting a whole lot of cooperation out of it. I'm trying it to is. keep them wet. Once it makes its way all the way to the top, it should have cleaned. Yeah, it made a complete rotation. So. Yeah. Yeah, there was no way that we were gonna do that with it in the car, huh? No. Yeah, it's at the top now. Bunch of crud come out of this one here too. I think if we just get some towels and clean this up, just keep working it, keep working it, keep working it. I think we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think so. Uh, I feel I like we're paying attention, but it looks like the lifters are moving. Yeah, I'll spray those too. We're definitely better than where we were yeah. yesterday. So now that we've got this engine pretty much turning over from the back on the flywheel here, uh, we're getting a little bit closer to being able to put it back in the car and see what we've got. Now we wanted to go ahead and address the broken off head bolt while we had it out. We tried a little bit of heat on it, that didn't seem to do the trick. So we ended up being able to weld a nut to the top side of the bolt there and then just being able to unscrew it from there. Uh, we did replace our old rusted out oil filter as well as putting new oil down into the oil pan. So now there's nothing left to do but just get this motor put back in the car and hopefully she turns over under her own power after setting up for over 40 years. Yeah. That's good. Even the lifters, all that stuff seems yeah. to be working fine. 
Yep. Ain't turning over super fast, but that may just be how that starter's geared, and it may still be a little stiff. I bet it is still a little stiff. I just keep running with it. Hang on just a second. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure those things. That would be the only one. I want to make sure it's going back down. but I'm hoping it's just these it's, yeah. lifters dropping back down. All right, let me clean these out and then kind of uh, let them soak down with some more transmission fluid. Okay. I should have filled this filter up, hopefully, right. if the oil pump's working. Crazy how well it's... Just a hair above full, so okay. not much. Enough that it we're safe. I mean, it's not like over full. Crazy how well those cylinders cleaned up for what they look like to begin with. Right, yeah. We want to go ahead and start putting the heads back on it then? Well, I guess we need to clean up the valves, make sure they're not sticking and stuff. Right, yeah, make sure those parts are working and then... Once the valves, make sure they're not sticking, clean up the bottom side of them, pop them on there, and then put the intake and the distributor on it, I guess. Yeah. Might see her try to do something today. I mean, right. I guess it's already made one advancement. Right. So this is going to be the head that's going to sit down on top of the block, on top of the pistons there. And as you guys can tell, it's extremely rusted up here on these valves. Now, once these cars have sat for a long time, it's very normal for these valves to just be stuck. Sometimes they'll be stuck open, sometimes they'll be stuck closed. What we've done is we've been spraying it up on the top side here because all these valves were closed. We've been spraying it with some PB Blaster, letting it set. And what we'll typically do is just take a little hammer, hit it on these springs here, And normally if you hit it and it's sticking, it'll just go out and then the valve will stay open. And this one, in this case, it looks like all of these aren't actually stuck. So we should be able to get away with just kind of cleaning this head up a little bit, putting it back on top of the engine, put our intake on there, and see if she just tries to fire off after that. <laughs> Don't act like we're getting no any fire, fire, does it? I bet we're not sparking at the... I bet it's this coil. That thing looks rough. It, it, yeah, it's rough, <laughs> rough. Which we probably have a coil we can use off something else. Uh, go ahead. Not a speck no, of spark. No. Uh, well, now I'm getting hot because I'm running it straight here to the... Off the battery there, so I think I seen a coil in the toolbox. Let Let's try to me. switch that out first, I guess. Got a good connection everywhere. We just ain't getting nothing. Nope. Uh, and I don't know if that coils any count either. It should be. Right. I don't either. Try 
try it again. Nope. Let me make sure we're getting power down there. Yeah, we're getting juice down to the to the points there. But we're not sparking. A little bit. It's a point, so yeah. Go ahead again. There it goes. Yep. Got a little trash in there. Uh, trying to put it back together, I guess. Got it. Give her another little drink, I guess. Probably don't take much to make it pop off. All right. You ready? Not even a... Not even trying, is uh -huh. it? So new day here and it doesn't seem like we're making a lot of headway. Uh, we've been fighting just about every kind of different problem on this engine so far. We pulled the carburetor off just to check it out and found that it was just packed full of a lot of trash as well. So once we got that all cleaned out, we were able to dump a little bit more fuel and allow it to get down into the intake and into the cylinders. She just still doesn't want to fire off of that. So we went ahead and checked all of our rockers and our valves to make sure everything was adjusted right on that. Everything seems to look pretty good on that side. Now on the ignition side as far as spark, we, it seems like we've got our points sparking pretty good. We had to put a new cool on here, but when we pulled the spark plug out just to check it one more time, uh, we noticed a pretty big issue here. So it looks like the piston has actually hit the bottom of this spark plug here. So apparently these weren't the right spark plugs and it's a little bit too long. So we ran to town, got the right spark plugs in here, we think. Uh, Going to turn it over one more time. Hopefully that'll be the whole issue and she'll crank up and run for us. Close. That's a lot more than what we've had right, before. Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know if, you know, I know it wasn't an idea to reuse those head gaskets for sure, but we didn't have right. no choice being that finding them is almost impossible. Right. But we could be losing compression, compression so out of the head thinking, gaskets. Yeah. Uh, guess we could check that and see, I mean. Or it could be those rings. I mean, the motor was stuck. One of those rings, a couple of those rings are stuck too if it don't have no compression. We've had them before where they'd be right on the verge and that's what it was. Let's yeah. try it one more time. Let's pull the plugs, check the compression, that way we can at least rule that in or rule it out, you right, know? Right, right. I mean, it's not that big a deal to check it, so. Yeah, if we're not getting any compression, that'll be a big issue we're <laughs> gonna have to address. Right. I'll go grab that thing. Yeah, 75, maybe 80-ish. That's pretty bad. Try it again. Yeah, that ain't good. No. Let's check this front one. Oh, wow. <laughs> 35? Yeah, maybe. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be the problem right there. Wow. Yeah. Between 30 and 35, that's not. Yeah, I think this thing is supposed to have around 160 probably. Probably, Not a good yeah. motor, oh, yeah. you know. It would probably crank on a hundred on a hundred psi, I would think. Yeah. At least try yeah. more than it is now. Let's check this side. Maybe it'll just be. It might just be that side, that one head gasket. We know we ain't got any valves that are uh, sticking open, right. so we can kind of rule that out. 
but it could still be a valve that's not seeding real great, you know. Just because it's closing doesn't mean it's right. sealing off the greatest. Similar to the other one? Yeah, maybe close to 60. No, that was closer. Oh yeah, it was. What Let was this it. one back here? It was about, it was 75. 75, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's been the highest one, and it was a worse looking piston. Yeah. Just shy of 60, so. Yeah. So we got 75, 30, <laughs> and shy of 60, huh? Yep. If this one's the right number, I'm gonna holler bingo. <laughs> Forty-five. Forty-five. One more time. Yep. What was that one? Forty-five. Let me put some oil in here right. and see if it'll help loosen. If it's like a stuck ring, that yep. oil will kind of help maybe loosen it up. So the two front ones were very low. Very low. And while the back ones are very low, the front ones are almost non-existent. Right Got us up around 110, 110. 115. Yeah. Try it again. See if it'll hold it. Not really, huh? No, about 95. Huh. Back down, ain't it? Yep, back down to 70. So we're losing it. Pretty quick. Pretty yeah. <laughs> uh. I think we're just gonna have to keep going around these things, kind of oiling mm -hmm. them and hoping that it, you know, if it is a stuck ring, it'll break loose and build up a little more compression. Cause I don't think that thing's ever gonna even try more than it is right now to crank, especially as slow as it's right, spinning yeah. over. Yeah. If you could get it to spin over faster, but I mean, all the way you're gonna do that would be pull starting or push starting it. And without a wheel, <laughs> that makes that pretty much impossible. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and pulled these plugs back out just to check the compression on it. And I'm glad that we did. I mean, the numbers we are getting are just extremely low for this engine. Uh, typically, if this motor was in tip top shape, running the way it should, you'd be looking at 165 pounds of uh, pressure on the combustion there. And we are only getting as much as 30 on the low end on this motor right here. So it could be those head gaskets. We did reuse the old head gaskets. Now, the only reason why we did that is because we couldn't find any locally around here. And it was just gonna to take too long to get them in to get this video out to you guys. So it could be that the head gasket's allowing the pressure to seep out somewhere, or it could be that the rings are stuck on some of these pistons. So we also know the motor was locked up. That's very typical for these rings to stay in and not allowing it to build up pressure like that. So we're gonna to try to just put oil in these cylinders, keep turning it over. Hopefully the pressure builds up and then we'll just try to crank it again if we get better pressure after that. <laughs> There at I, first, yeah, didn't I, it? I thought it was going to. It just don't have enough compression. Uh -uh. It, it fired off when we had that oil in the top yeah. of it, but after that it kind of stopped. So after we put a little bit of oil down in these cylinders, the compression come up just a little bit, but we're still only at 60 on this one. Our top piston compression was 100 at this back one right here, and then we're around 85 on both of these. So still extremely low compression. We pumped a couple squirts of oil down in there just to help it build up a little bit more compression, since how we think it's probably gonna be these rings here. And that's why I tried to start off 
off at the beginning there. So we could probably pull the plugs out again, squirt a little bit of oil in there. I think if this thing would ever start up and run and let it build up some heat, those rings would pop back into place and we'd build up a lot more compression there. So, but we're just fighting it turning over too slow. We're fighting just no compression at that point too. So I guess we'll just keep trying on it. Worst case scenario, just give up. It sounds like it's close, it's just yeah. not there. I think if you were spinning over faster. Yeah. I think I think if we could ever get it to where the compression was, it was there, and instantly it was hitting it again. Yeah. Right now it's just it's taking too long to get from compression to compression on the same cylinder. Yeah, push starting is kind of out of the question. Yeah. Push or pull starting it. Huh. Think that'll work? Huh? <laughs> Kind of strange, but yeah, it should work. Question is, how hard is it going to be to pull it? You got it in gear? I don't know, get it in gear. What gear you want it in? Uh, Whatever one I can get it in. Maybe first, I don't know. I don't know what's going to make it pull the easiest. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Motor never even, I mean the valve didn't even. Not spinning over? Nothing, no. You sure it's in gear? Yeah. It spun easy down here, that's for sure. Yeah. That'll work if we can get it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, that's first. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be first. Just try a different one, okay. just. Okay. It feels like it's in something. It's not spinning it's not, nothing, uh, there's is it? nothing that's... Well, you know this thing's got that freewheel transmission in it, so I don't know, we might try. There's like a little lever in between the seat there. So it looks like it's pulled now. Maybe? Mm -hmm. Try one more time. This looks like something you'd do with a little kid's car, to, <laughs> yeah. an SSP. It'd be so cool if it racer. works, though. I heard something in the uh, transmission, though. Yeah, I heard though. something, yeah. It sounds like something kind of dragging the air. Sounds like the clutch is slipping. Huh. But as far as the... That ain't doing nothing. The lifters are, yeah, I mean... I wonder, valves. let me see something real quick. I wonder if our transmission shot. You got it in gear still? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Try a different gear. It should spin here. Okay. It's spinning a little bit. Not much though. So. Still in that gear? Yep. Why am I able to spin it? I don't know. If I go backwards, I can hear it. And that transmission, Drag it, yeah. yeah, dragging. It ain't even spinning forward now. Right. That clutch is slipping or something. Something's messed up inside that transmission. I bet. And I start to say, it could be something that, that, that may be the reason it was out where it was at. It could right. have been running when it was there, but not driving. Well, <laughs> I guess that was worth a shot. I think it would have worked if it would have <laughs> Yeah, I think here. so too. I mean, it would have gave you enough spin to... Yeah, to spin it over spin a little it over faster. Yeah. The same thing as pull or push starting it, yeah. just in the air. <laughs> 
Well guys, I hate to say it, but I think we've made it about as far as we can with the time frame that we're working with on this car. Uh, it has come a long ways. When we pulled it out of the woods, we really didn't know anything about this car or what to expect until we got up underneath the hood. Popping open the hood and finding a huge rat nest, well that's never fun as your first obstacle to have to jump over. Once we got everything cleaned up out from underneath the hood, we found out that this thing was just stuck just like the rest of them. Fortunately, it wasn't as bad on the top end, but once we got the heads off, and seen what the pistons looked like, they were just super rusty. So we had to pull this block out. We were able to get on the flywheel and get it to turn over inch by inch until it was finally able to turn over on its own. From that point, we went ahead and reinstalled all the parts back onto the block, including the original head gaskets and the intake gasket as well. Uh, simply because these parts are really hard to find. And when you do find them, they're three to four weeks out, and that just wasn't gonna work for us at this time. Now that we've got this thing turning over by the starter, it would get really close to wanting to fire up, uh, but we pulled the plugs and found out that it has really low compression. So more than likely, that's gonna be some stuck rings in there, not allowing it to build up the pressure it needs to or it could even be them old head gaskets. If we were able to push or pull start this car, it would spin over a lot quicker, probably break those rings up and allow it to fire up and then begin to build up pressure after that. But seeing that we only have three wheels and the other wheel is still stuck out in the woods, we had to determine something of how we could do that. We hooked a tow strap around the front wheel, put it in gear, pulled it by hand, but unfortunately, it seems like the transmission has some damage to it as well. So unfortunately, guys, we hate to to feel defeated on anything, but sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, and I guess sometimes you just got to take a break from them and come back later. So we hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you on the next one.